Alright guys, what is up? It's your boy Kittens bringing you guys another deck profile and this one is Florian Baldarin Scion and I've been absolutely enjoying his effect. It feels like one of the upper end decks in my collection that just really has potential to become very powerful. And you know, so let's go over the effect. First strike at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, that's the uh, main phase after combat. Look at the top X of your library where X is the total amount that your opponents have lost this turn. Exile one, put the rest on the bottom, and then you may play the exile card this turn. Super awesome. More or less just allows us to tutor for attacking damage, direct damage, and most times when we're getting the tutor from Valerian, what I've found is we're tutoring right around nine to 12 cards. Um, whether it is doubling the damage or tripling from Valerian or getting a secondary attack in, that's normally what we're tutoring for. Um, there's very few times where we're tutoring for only the Zion attack, and it's just been super nice. Uh, and then something else I've been doing is running a secret commander. This is one of the few times that I've done a secret commander, and it's Prosper Tomebound. Uh, for Tomebound, when we play cards from Exile, we'll get the treasure tokens, and then at the end of our turn, we can get uh, an additional card off of Exile that we can play uh, the next turn and that'll allow us to get treasure tokens off of the cards we searched from Florian while also getting ones from this opening the opportunity to get two different treasures inside of the same turn and we also use Valakit Exploration and Theater of Horrors to maximize the effect of uh, you know this impulse draw of exiling the top card of our library and then being able to play it uh, where Florian's more of a tutor than just the top card but these guys give us tons and tons of advantage uh, Valakid Exploration is we can only play the exiled cards until the end of our turn and then they're sent to our graveyard rather than being uh, gone forever. And then Theater of Horrors will allow us to play uh, cards that are exiled on it for uh, forever. And even if this dies and then comes back, we can still play it because it specifies exiled with Theater of Horrors. So really interesting effects for advantage. And then, you know, all of these together uh, combo well with our Prosper, giving us additional opportunities to get treasures. And so outside of that, just a little bit of our commander fun synergy stuff. There is a kind of almost secret commander, but not really. Our Yagaroth, the Blood Sky Sire. This allows us and to, well, target anyone and ourselves to get tutors uh, once we attack with uh, Yagaroth. And it, the tutor goes to the top of the library. And we have actually uh, targeted someone else to tutor something one time. That did happen. This is kind of a secret commander because it'll allow us to find all of these random little pieces. So without further ado, what we're doing here is really just having a whole number of cards that we're, if we have one of them, we search the other one. So we're going to start going over some of these lines. Uh, and one of the lines is to find Burning Rune Demon and play Burning Rune Demon. We also have a handful of ways to recur cards from our graveyard. We'll go over those in a second. So when we play Burning Rune Demon, you search your library for two different cards, not named Burning Rune Demon. It's Commander, so all good. And then your opponent chooses to send one of them to the graveyard and one of them to your hand. So you're going to find two separate targets. And there's a handful of targets that you can really just pressure your opponent for. So one of the first ones you might want is you might want to search Wake to Slaughter and Quake Bringer. Having access to Wake to Slaughter will allow you in your graveyard or in your hand, depending on what the opponent chooses, to replay Burning Rune Demon and get additional searches. And again, you know, we have a handful of lines here. The Chainer Nightmare Adept will allow us to play creatures from our graveyard, give them haste. Uh, the Beacon of Unrest will play them from graveyard to field, and Reclamation will bring them from graveyard to hand. So we have a couple ways to replay the Burning Rune Demon right away, but the Wake to Slaughter is a way that we're going to tutor directly with the card. Um, so then we might go Quake, Wake to Slaughter and Quake Bringer. Quake Bringer is an upkeep damage. When he's on the board, he'll do, deal two damage to everyone at upkeep. And when he's in the graveyard, he'll do two damage to everyone at upkeep if you control a giant. And there's some light giant synergies that we have in here. We have Tectonic Giant and Calamity Bear. Calamity Bear is the big one that you really want to you know, partner up with your Quake Bringer. This will allow giant sources to deal double damage to anything. And Calamity Bear also works really well with Tectonic Giant, where if he attacks or targeted with a spell, he'll do three damage to each opponent and also exiling the top two cards of our library. Tectonic Giant's an interesting one because he fits into this little giant package while also being an in-between for both of our commanders. He allows us to get additional damage for Valerian triggers while also allowing us to exile cards off the top to potentially get additional mana inside of our turns, just depending on which kind of board state we have and what kind of lines we're going for. Now, uh, one of the things to think about is that there's a couple ways that Wake to Slaughter can work. So we play Ruining, Burning Rune Demon, we get a creature plus Wake to Slaughter. This either goes to Graveyard or it goes to Hand. So we might get two activations from Wake to Slaughter in the best case scenarios, like scenarios where we find a four mana creature 
the opponent might go, hey, uh, or well, maybe we find like a huge mana or like a small mana creature. The opponent might go, okay, well, creature to grave, wake to slaughter to hand because you have to spend more mana for wake to slaughter. And then I get to choose if the creature comes out or not. So they might send wake to slaughter back to hand. You're then gonna you know, choose to do burning rune. You get the burning rune to hand or grave. And then you can get uh, sneakily three to, or two additional activations sometimes if you don't have to use wake to slaughter initially. Wake to slaughter, if it's sent to grave, you just exile it, it's gone forever, and then you can play it the second time. I know that's so much explanation, but that, that line is just so like, yes. Um, now, some other things that you might want to find on the first or second time that you play the Burning Rune Demon, you might want to find Pass to Flames, Jeskai's Will. I mean, this is one of those ones where it's like, well, do you give the person Jeskai's Will in their hand and then they can pass in flames in the grave, uh, you know, and go like Jeskai's Will in hand, Jeskai's Will in graveyard? Or do you give them Pass in Flames to hand and you give them Jeskai's Will in grave, so you Pass in Flames and then Jeskai's in your graveyard? Like, it's just, it's a super difficult decision. And some things that we might want to add in there to really just add a little bit of flavor and fun to our past in flames is Ignite the Future, Desperate Ritual, and Rite of Flame. And the Desperate Ritual and Rite of Flame also work well as just early rampers that allow us to get Florian while also having mana for damage spells. So, you know, these couple cards in here just help spice up that little bit of a line and, you know, make our, our Burning Rune Demon line a little bit better. And one of the reasons I love this Burning Rune Demon line is because this it takes up like four or five turns where every single turn you're just going to have a, a big play where you're, you know, searching something out, you're interacting with your opponents, you're like, send one to grave, send one to hand. And we also have these guys to kind of get that, you know, chain going a little bit more fluidly. You know, if we, you know, run out of our, our uh, wake to slaughter, we can chain her and re -bing, bring back the burning rune demon and or, you know, anything, give stuff haste. Super powerful. Beacon of Unrest goes back into our graveyard and then, or back into our library, and then we can play a creature to you know, field and the reclamation, you know, again, just gives us that redundancy with the Blood Sky Sire being able to search any of these cards that are needed for that. Now, okay, so let's keep going over our little lines. Now there's Rogarak. Rogarak and Drana, the Liberator of Malkir. So much fun. Okay, like if you if you have Rogarak, you're gonna search off the top for Drana. If you have Drana, you're gonna start searching for the, the Rogarak or the Ornithopter. And one of the main things is there's a handful of uh, zero mana things in the deck because there are times in the game where you really just want to pour mana into your main phase one, make your attack super big. Uh, maybe you want to do something that gives you double stuff or you just need the creature presence and then you know the creature presence finds you something, another play, and then you're into your attacks. And you really just need to get something, a creature, you know, and this rogue rack fits that perfectly. You might end up tutoring a handful of cards off the top and just playing a creature as an additional blocker after a big swing. And it just fits that that little bit of necessity very well. And there's a handful of zero mana spells as we go through that, you know, I might not say that for, but kind of are that. But this is just ah, this is so much fun to play rogue rack and then just be like, he doesn't do anything unless I find Drana. Like, <laughs> just like, yes. And then uh, some of the things, so this is a, just a little bit of a draw engine. And then we have Fiery Emancipation and Jeskai Thrice Reborn as a little bit of our damage triplers. There's a handful of damage doubling and damage tripling. Uh, the giant, the uh, Calamity Bearer will double for giant damage. And then we have, you know, the tripling here, tripling for Jeskai's. Fiery Emancipation is, is I would say, more powerful than Jeskai Thrice Reborn, unless you're using uh, Jeskai in your command zone to, to really ensure that you get this effect, because Emancipation just ends the game. You, you just get so many, just a, so much just additional damage. It's hard to even describe, like just small spells that you, you know, might not have been impactful can literally just kill a player or two. Um, all right, so now let's go through some of the other things. And in this deck, I don't run any infinite combos. I run like almost infinite. Like if one more card was in here, it would be, right? So we're doing Vito and Zoran Ord. Both of these work really well together. So whenever we gain life, target opponent loses that much. There are points in the game where we have five to 10 mana on board, you know, lands, and we can sack them to get like 20 damage to someone's face. Just, just right to face, just call it a day. Uh, Zoran Orb also works really well with Aether Flux Reservoir, you know, allowing us to get a little bit of extra life to just ping an extra player. Or just, uh, you know, after we sack 50 to try and kill someone, we can protect ourselves a little bit with that orb. And then uh, Aether Flux, Bolus' Citadel, and Bergy all work really well together. Um, you know, these two and kind of, you know, 
it's like you know it is really strong it is borderline infinite and i don't think it needs too much explanation and those bergy god of storytelling whatever we cast spells it'll allow us to bank a little bit of that mana we don't lose the mana uh, as the phases of steps end this will allow us to uh, one you know combo off with our you know this little bit of a section but it'll also allow us to cast spells in our main phase one before combat, save some of that mana to then search something and potentially get a bigger spell than what we would have had. And that's just really nice synergy there. And then uh, where else is it? Oh yeah, we can also boast twice during each of our turns rather than once, allowing us to get double searches off of our Blood Sky Sire guy, wherever that guy went. He's somewhere. Yeah, there he is, there he is. Uh, so that allows us to get extra boasts there. And that's just really awesome. And then the flip side of Bergy is like disgusting in this, absolutely disgusting in this deck, where you discard a card, exile the top two cards of your library, and you can play those cards this turn. So something like this, where you have Prosper out, if you can just cast the cards out of exile, you're getting treasures for each. Um, there's a whole number of zero mana spells in the deck. And if you want it to go faster, then you just add a couple more of those zero and one mana spells. and you end up with this kind of a combo or you just have you know have him as your main commander and do him like this the combo of these two is just is oppressively strong but for me i'm mostly going to be using bergy i don't think i'm going to be flipping her over to the other side even though there is some synergy there okay so we went over all this stuff there's some lands and stuff over here okay cool so there's this stuff there's some board wipes and into some of our damage strategies so generic board wipe and then we have some of our group damage effects this is also a board wipe it deals damage to creatures and each player it just uh does not hit stuff with flying sometimes that's a bummer but casting this is a board wipe that also hits face incredibly powerful um and then meat hook massacre gives a little bit of life gain kill stuff just sits there just keeps giving us life gain absolutely awesome Radko's Charm is actually sneakily incredibly powerful in this deck. There's a handful of times, there's once I activated it on a board where I think there was seven, one person had seven creatures, one person had like three. So it literally did 10 damage off of one card. I mean, there was a situation where I did, I think it was 18, it was 18. So I, you know, I was sitting there like you draw a charm and it's like, wait, do I want to tutor my deck for 18 cards right now? And just like, you know, hit my opponents for a bunch of damage go to combat and then, you know, do a little bit of something, something, and then just tutor. And I was like, that's just insane. You know, in this deck, cards like Radko's Charm really become, do I want a tutor for 20? Do I want a tutor for 10? Like you just draw it and it's like, what do I do now? <laughs> like, uh, So Rad, or well, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Culligan's Command. This is another great one that gives us some of that creature card redundancy. And then in early game, we can use this to trigger the group damage and also like destroy an artifact or maybe not discard, but just like, you know, knock someone off of a board state while also being able to give us a little bit of synergy with our commander late game it enables us to you know get this like ruining rune line going uh, just really awesome card our fiery confluence can be a little bit of a board wipe but mostly it's just there to do a bunch of damage to face because we choose three we're just going to do you know six to each opponent that's like six twelve eighteen at max we can also kill we can kill cr creatures and then deal like four to each person's face as well so there's a lot of you know modular goodness there chandra torch of flame gives us a little bit of mana and a little bit of group damage off the top while also giving us the exile of the top so we get a little bit of that impulse draw that'll work well with our prosper treasures and things like that while also getting damage um, so it's just there's a lot of good things there for the chandra torch of defiance i feel like if we ever ultimate her it's just like yes like it's just so good while also being able to just ping a, a singular creature. So it's just, there's a lot of good stuff here for Chandra. And then uh, Kador, Kadar, Kador, the Doom Scourge. There's a couple times I played Doom Scourge and it really tilted the game in my favor. Like it, the couple times that I played him, I've played him on boards where there's big creatures that I just don't want to attack me. Like, you know, boards where people have big creatures and they're kind of just like, I don't know if I swing into that board because I'll lose my creatures, right? Because everyone just has so much. And it just forces everyone to attack each other except for you and it's just so nice every time i've played it it's been such a massive card thermo alchemist uh does a lot of damage you know it it's one of those things we don't think about it but if thermo alchemist is sitting out he's a nice juicy two mana you go like two mana play play this guy right after you know boom hit everyone to start tutoring you know you're off to the races Thermo Alchemist just as a card that sits there and just repetitively will do damage, sometimes can get more than the, the one activation. 
it's just really good. You know, same thing for the impact tremors. You know, you get more than the activation. It just sits there, you know, just hitting your opponents for more and more and more as you, you know, keep doing stuff and just really gets that damage in. Gibbering Fiend, he's maybe one of the weaker cards because his uh, deal once everyone only triggers when you're entering the battlefield. And then he has the Delirium effect where you deal one damage to a player at their upkeep. And really what I'm doing here is valuing Gibber Gibbering Fiend's ability uh, for the Delirium because the only time that we're going to be triggering, you know, our scion to get the tutors off of this is when this comes onto the board otherwise it's only hitting opponents and their upkeep so we don't get the damage trigger but it does it does work it's nice it just i really am valuing that delirium in here and now we have a little bit more of our group damage into some of our other tutor things so we have psychosis crawler and fate unraveler to burn people uh, for when uh, they draw and then psychosis crawler is when uh, when i draw players lose life. And then we have, to mix in with that, we have Fateful Showdown, Reforge the Soul, and Wheel of Misfortune as our wheels. Reforge the Soul is a nice one where, well, actually all of them, uh, these two let you draw seven. Uh, this is a nice one where you can get the Miracle. Very, very nice. And then Wheel of Fortune deals direct damage to uh, players, whoever the player was that chose the highest number, and then you draw seven. Fateful Showdown will deal direct damage to target creature or player and then you uh, only you discard your hand and draw. And then we have Dream Devourer that will allow us to take advantage of our wheels. Uh, we can give our non-land cards foretell, and then whenever we foretell, he gets a little plus two, plus two. And we can really take advantage of Dream Devourer because the two of our wheels are just draw seven. Uh, the only one this really matters with is Fateful Showdown because we do want our hand size to discard to ping someone for damage. So, but uh, otherwise, Dream Devourer is just a really great way to prepare for finding a wheel. And this is one of those situations in the deck where we, we find Dream Devourer, we're going to try to start tutoring for a wheel. We find a wheel, we're going to start trying to tutor for Dream Devourer or Fate Unraveler or Psychosis Crawler. And it, there's, there's, there's just some beautiful synergy there that, that really works well. So otherwise, let's go over some of this stuff. This is kind of our generic interaction stuff and then some stuff underneath. So, uh... Opposition agent lets us exile cards that our opponents are tutoring. We flash it in, steal their tutor. We can play the tutor, get treasures from Prosper, from casting it from exile. Super fun. Pyromancer isn't as much of interaction as much as it's just board presence. Let's us just have something that our opponents point at and they're like, hey, that has to die, right? And then the rest of our strategy kind of remains intact. And then Dire Fleet Daredevil lets us take advantage of our opponent's instant sorceries in our graveyard, uh, just letting, letting us get a little bit of additional interaction that we might not plan for in the deck, right? Pyroblast. For me as a person, I'm usually playing green or blue. I'm usually both of those colors together. So I most of the time I'm gonna have two or three counters in my decks. And you know, Pyroblast just gives me a little bit of that in red because I just, you know, there's a little bit of not that in Radkos. And then these are cards that we really want for our commander. You know, searching specifically to find with our commander out. You know, Swift Foot, Lightning Greaves gives us the haste protection. Uh, pretty self-explanatory stuff for our commander. And then we have Fethus, or Falthus, <laughs> Falthus, the Shadow Cat Familiar. Commanders have Menace and Death Touch. At three mana, it can be a little bit difficult. I might want to replace him with Shadow Spear, but I just I just love the like the flavor text and everything. And the way the effect works with the uh with our, so with our guys. So we have menace and death touch. So with the death touch, it'll make we have uh first strike. So more or less anything that blocks it is just gonna die. And then Menace, you know, multiple creatures have to block Flare, and so we'll be able to kill multiple creatures that block. And there's, there's a couple of situations where this can get very, very, like, belligerent, where let's say we have uh, Shadow Cat out, we have Scion, and then we have a Damage Doubler out, or a Tripler, that or maybe Jeskai. And we go, hey, Valerian does triple damage, and now he has Menace, Death Touch, and First Strike attack. Right, I mean that's that's pretty belligerent. I mean it's not terrible, but it's there. And then we have the Ember Claw Familiar to do additional damage to our opponent. So whenever a commander deals damage or combat damage, it deals that much to each other opponent. It does not kill people for group damage uh, because the extra damage comes from this guy's effect. So, but it is one way to just have a nice little, you play him on turn two, you can play a Flarian on turn three. You know, you might just go like afterwards. Like, you know, say, let's say we play a Flarian on turn three, we hold this guy, turn four, attack with Flarian, and then all of a sudden, you know, opponents that weren't expecting 
expecting to take as much do and then we can assume on the turn after playing Flarian that we have three to four mana so we you know save one of our mana or two if we draw a land then tutor and look off the top of our library so that's, that's a nice little place like a uh, place synergy there and we have possibility storm this is one of the you know super fun cards that i as a player just absolutely love i am in love with group hug decks and Possibility Storm is a fun one, we, one where we can actually play around the effect because it's whenever a player casts a spell from his or her hand. And we have a handful of cards that were, you know, our main commander, we're casting spells from our exile. Prosper, exile, exile, exile. So there's a handful of like engines that we're using in the deck that we're wanting to assemble that allow us to get around our possibility storm. While also, if we're casting spells from our hand, we're then getting a spell from exile, allowing us to, you know, kind of have that nice synergy we get a little bit of treasure here you know we're also continuing to play spells from exile so it's just a fun thing there now what we're going to go over now is the last little leg of stuff the rampant things strike it rich is a nice little card it works a little bit with the burning rune line but you're probably not going to want to find it it does enrich our uh you know past in flame stuff because we'll give them flashback for one rather than three and then we can use it uh, easily from the graveyard early game gives us a little bit more mana so we can maybe get an additional play uh, additional search or something late game filter it is there i like it oh and then it also combos with prosper gives us an additional treasure if we can play it from exile while prosper's out we have a uh, fire diamond curse of opulence gives us a little bit more gold stuff it incentivizes people to attack it just fits the the flavor of the deck ever flowing chalice is a great zero mana target and just lets us you know get additional mana uh, different stages of the game mind mindstone radko signet talisman i figure we should just speed through these right they're just mana racks Velowar, uh, Magda. Magda is an interesting one. There was a couple of dragons that I was playing in the deck to tutor. I think one was a swift war kite, but then I was like, well, why would I do that when I could just tutor stuff with my commander? So one funny thing you, I was doing before was that you sack five, uh, find swift war kite, swift war kite plays a creature from your graveyard. And then, I don't know, I ended up taking it out because you know, it is just life. But this is one fun little kind of like commander combo you can do. Signet, diamond, soul ring. Oh, here's a fun one. Yeah, wayward guide beast. Um, so this guy is like kind of a really interesting way to get mana back in, uh, with the way that we do this. So you might be able to play this guy, you know, let's say main phase one, you get a little bit of extra damage in for, let's say your Valerian trigger or something like that. And you add uh, land back to your hand from the field. You get to tutor off the top of your deck. Uh, you know, it gets exiled. And then you, if you haven't played a land yet, you can play that land that you've returned to your hand, letting you net that little bit of mana while also playing spells in your main phase one. So it just, it lets you kind of circumvent a little bit of your deck if you're just missing mana on your, your turns where you're trying to get from kind of like, kind of six to 10 mana, like right inside of that range. It lets you kind of just, just use the mana you have more efficiently. And it's also just a great attacker. Uh, it's just, it's an interesting uh, fit in there. And then we have Jeweled Lotus and Mana Crypt. These are our proxies because I just got these guys. I've been able to you know, then slot my real copies out and have them sitting in a collector's binder. So it feels good. Feels good. And then we have our mana. And I figure uh, mana isn't super important. There's a few things that are like the super combo we some mortuary mire that'll allow us to get additional effects that will return this little burning rune engine line uh, back to our hand. And then we have, oh, here we go. Uh, Opal Palace and Wrapping Up Ruins. So Wrapping Up Ruins will allow us to get a little bit more extra group damage in just in our land slot. And then we have Opal Palace that'll allow us to get 1-1 one, one counters on our commander if we pay the extra one mana. And because our commander has first strike, the extra 1-1 one, one counter is actually really impactful. You know, being able to just straight up kill any 3-3 three, three that doesn't have uh, like, you know, first strike or, you know, however that is. Uh, and then you give them the, to the 4-4, four, four, it's like all of a sudden it's like a whole nother class of creatures that they can kill. And otherwise, just a handful of generic lands. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, and all that stuff. And it's been your boy Kittens. Oh, and in this deck, uh, Terramorphic Expanse and stuff and Evolving Wilds are super important because we want to move the top card of our library around when we have the Bolas of Citadel and are really trying to just go off. So those lands are important as well. So yeah, I yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. It's been super long because there's so many little combos and things to go over and I actually might have even missed something. I don't even know. So I <laughs> just hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe. It's been your boy Kittens. Peace.